Hey there, everybody. In this episode of the screencast or the podcast or whatever these happen to be, uh, we're going to talk about PowerPoint because they've actually made an app that's okay. Uh, I know I have, you know, kind of repeated a couple of times that Microsoft actually makes some pretty good applications now. And PowerPoint turns out to be one of them. Uh, as we've gone through, occasionally, um, when you see uh, like the, the splash screen, uh, for the the podcast we've been doing, uh, I've actually made some of those in PowerPoint. Uh, and if I didn't use PowerPoint, I've used one of the Mac alternatives to PowerPoint called Keynote. It just happens to depend what kind of device I'm on. Uh, if I'm on a you know an iPad or a Mac, I'll use Keynote just because it's a little bit faster. Uh, if I'm here like I am now on a regular Windows device, I'll use PowerPoint. And really. This is the reason to know and love PowerPoint. Uh, because at some point in time, somebody is going to look at you when you are at work, right? So you are here, you're in the office, and you are actually doing a bang-up job, right? Uh, it's the reason you're going to college. It's the reason you study things. It's so that sooner or later, somebody's going to look at you and go, you are a subject matter expert. You actually know what the heck is going on here? And that is fantastic, right? That's the whole point. That's why you've been working this hard on CIS 102. That's why you've been working this hard, you know, getting your chemistry credits out of the way so you can uh, continue on with, you know, whatever your degree is. That's why you're, you know, killing yourself with all this math and all of your engineering courses. It's because you want down the road somebody to look at you and go, you know more about whatever the subject is than anybody else we have here. And the next step to that is you need to tell other people about that. And really, without fail, the software we use to tell other people about your subject matter expertise is going to be PowerPoint, uh, because PowerPoint is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, right? Like, I cannot remember the last time I went to, you know, to teach at a conference or whatever that they did not have PowerPoint. I bet you it's been 10 plus years, Um and that's probably the software you are going to go reflexively to, right? You've got it installed on your computers. You can always get to office365.com and get your PowerPoint presentation from there. So really, it's the go-to across a wide arc of different industries for how are you going to transmit the fact that you are a subject matter expert to other people. So now that we've gone over you know, the, the basics. Why would you choose PowerPoint? Well, because it's everywhere. Um, let's talk about some of the stuff that makes you good at PowerPoint that has nothing to do with the software itself, right? So everything we do here inside of PowerPoint is things that you can find and know from the MyIT Lab tutorials. I actually think that MyIT Lab does a really fantastic job of kind of exposing you to all of the the really basic things that make PowerPoint powerful. That's that's not where like a majority of your organizational learning has to come for PowerPoint. Actually, that has to be, of course, it's not the right thing to go flip back to. This is. Um, that comes from just some general guidelines on what makes you a good presenter and what makes for a usable PowerPoint presentation. Um, so the, um, the link I'll provide for you here is for GFC Global. Um, they work with Goodwill. That's actually the GF, uh, Goodwill Foundation here. Um, and it's it's just a repetition of kind of the standard set of good PowerPoint presentation tips out there. So this is in no way, shape, or form um, just from learnfree.org. This is not their original list. Um, this is something like apa.org tells you the same thing. Uh, this is actually something, there's a Microsoft uh, knowledge base article that goes through most of these as well. Um, so this is not like groundbreakingly new material any place, but these are certainly things that will help you 
to make better PowerPoint presentations. And the very first thing, which I cannot stress enough, comes right from here, which is do not read a presentation straight from your slides. Um, the worst presentations I have ever gone to are where people are reading off of the slide to me. Actually, the worst presentation I ever went to, I had to pay a lot of, well, okay, my organization had to pay a lot of money for, uh, and I went down to West Bend, Indiana um, to go to this, you know, really high-priced teachers conference, and I am not exaggerating to you, the very, very well-compensated um, presenter actually faced the wrong way to read off of her slideshow. She literally faced the same way we were speaking. Thank goodness she had a lapel mic on because we could hear her at least, but she was facing away from the audience because she was reading right off of the, the slideshow. Like, you could send me the slideshow and I can read from it at home, and I don't have to travel four hours to West Bend, Indiana to go ahead and do that. You are the the key feature of a PowerPoint presentation. It is not the slideshow. It is not any movies you have in there. It is not any of the high-quality um, like images that you put in there. You are the feature here. You really should just use your PowerPoint presentation as a guide. Um, provide fence posts there uh, so that your, your audience is listening to you. And if they need anything in the way of reinforcement or enhancement, then they can look up at the PowerPoint presentation. You're the subject matter expert here. You're the one who has demonstrated that you have the skills necessary um, to, to need to convey this to other people. So you're the center attraction here. The PowerPoint presentation is really just supposed to be a little bit of background uh, so that if you've got members of your audience who get lost, they can look up there and go, oh, this is what we're doing. So you are the the the, the feature here um, for your presentation. Next is at the very most, it's called the rule of fives. It's five by five by five. No more than five words per line. Uh, no more than five lines of text per slide. And no more than five densely populated text slides in a row. So really what we're trying to say here is don't put too much stuff on a slide. You should really just be featuring the big areas, the big huge content features, and the rest of it is up to you to convey. Um, so I've actually seen three by five, so um, three lines of text with three words on every line, that's probably too little, right? That's like a caveman trying to tell you things on a slide. Um, I think a little bit of nuance to this is helpful. I advocate that if you are going to give a presentation, to try and do a demo of that presentation in the place where you're going to do it. That way, if you've got a massive room where you're giving a presentation and there's no way that the people in the back row can read what you're doing, you're going to have to adjust. Uh, if you're doing a presentation in a really small conference room and you've got everybody just kind of huddled around, you know, a monitor or something, maybe that's okay. Um, so demo... <clears throat> The presentation beforehand just to make sure uh, that this five by five by five rule five words per line five lines of text per slide and no more than five text rich slides in a row that tends to help out um, don't forget your audience that comes next um, they're watching you give the presentation right so what you need to do is Make sure that you're giving a presentation that the audience is really looking for here. So this is what um, I would suggest to this. Don't forget who you are is number one. Uh, and, you know, that is right here. Kind of know your audience and tailor, your or tailor rather your presentation to their tastes and expectations look, you were picked to give this presentation, right? Don't change who you are just because now you think you have to be, 
you know, somehow more professional. Uh, you don't have to speak in like a high class British accent. You do not have to worry about getting bolted to one space in the floor. You do not have to worry about how much hand, you know, movement do you have when you're giving a presentation. You are the feature set here, right? So don't worry about who you are. Just worry about what you know. Uh, and just remember that your audience is here. So if you are going to use uh, you know, a whole host of uh, really technical jargon, just make sure you're defining that for your audience. If you've got a three-hour presentation you know you have to give, I will admit to you that's a very, very long presentation, right? You're going to want to break that up a little bit so that your audience isn't super fidgety uh, and they can't absorb all of that information. Um, you you really want to re kind of reduce, reduce, reduce all of the extra crap that you want to put in a presentation, right? We spend all this time with my IT lab giving you, you know, this is how to do transitions. This is how to do animations. This is how to have, you know, more stuff crammed into your slide. Just just ease back a little bit there. Keep a presentation simple. Keep a presentation light. Uh, mind your audience and don't worry about who you are when you're up there giving a presentation. That's clearly why you're there is because they picked you to give the presentation anyway. Um, next, choose readable colors and fonts. Um, it used to be much more common for you, the developer, you, the the slide show creator uh, to go through and have to pick colors and fonts and all of those things. But what I would suggest to you is PowerPoint's actually really good at this now. Um, so if you come in through slide design, just pick one of the templates that they give you and, and keep going from there. Your audience doesn't really care a whole bunch, right? There's not going to be a ton of people who are like, I'm really off put by the fuchsia here. That color of salmon is super duper distracting. Your, your audience is going to forget about how the presentation looked very, very quickly. What they are going to remember is what was the content here? in your presentation. That's by far the most important thing. So don't go getting crazy here. Just go ahead and use, you know, the baked in themes and the baked in templates and just worry about putting the content that you need to put up there. That's really all anybody cares about. Let's keep flipping through here. Um, finally, uh, I will admit to you that I have done this before, uh, is don't overload your presentations with animations. Again, nobody's going to care. Uh, once upon a time, when I was just starting out my career in education, uh, I had come from um, you know, doing IT management. I had come from philanthropy, so I worked in nonprofit this whole while. Um, and actually, I started my teaching career teaching in master's courses. Um, and my very first foray into teaching undergraduate courses, I was terrified because like I had been told that undergrads look for a different thing than graduate students do. Uh, and I made terrible mistakes in developing my own presentations for courses. Um, it, it took me until the review process at the end of that class, right? When, when students are giving me reviews, students were actually making a game out of figuring out what stupid slide transitions I would use from one slide to another. And the content was there and they appreciated the content, but they said, look, just like ease down, buddy, you got to stop with all this crap in between slides. And after reading that, I was like, you know what? They're right. That's it's distracting. And since then, I've gone to other conferences, and there's other instructors just like me who are making that same mistake. I'm supposed to be a professional here. I'm supposed to know how much stuff to put in there, and I fell into this trap. Um, just have a simple transition from one slide to another. Have a simple, just like appear animation for your. Uh, your bullet points if you really need one. But other than that, again, the PowerPoint presentation is just here to be in the background. You are the feature set. And, you know, between animations and transitions, just, just settle down. Keep it simple. You are the subject here. You are the one who is driving the content. Make sure that you are not hiding behind a completely overdone and frankly useless presentation. The information that the audience is most concerned with is what you can give them. 
So don't let PowerPoint fool you into thinking it is the most important thing happening in a presentation. You are the most important thing happening in a presentation.